Hey everyone, uh, I know I haven't made a video for a little while, and uh, considering uh, Valentine's Day is tomorrow, I thought I would talk a little bit about the levels of love. This interesting chapter I wrote about in my book, the different qualities or the levels of love. And uh, English is a really plain language. We only have one word for love. Yeah, there's affection and compassion. Um, but if you look back at ancient Greek, there were four levels for the word love. All right. So we had storge, phileo, eros, and agape. Four levels, four words for love. And in English, we only have one. So let's, let's talk a little bit about uh, these four levels in Greek, what it means. Storge is like a familial love, a love for a mother, for a child, for a grandparent to a grandchild, um, the love between cousins, something like that. So storge is familial love. And then you have phileo, which is where we get the term like Philadelphia. Um, Phileo is, is often used for a brotherly love or a friendship type love. So almost like a camaraderie. Maybe you could describe uh, brothers in arms as having a phileo type love. Uh, I know a lot of the guys I used to train martial arts with, we had this camaraderie, this phileo love between us. Really powerful. And next you have eros. Um, and Eros is often described as a romantic love between lovers. And it's so beautiful. You see the picture I have behind me of uh, Shiva and Parvati or another in the Hindu uh, religion would be uh, Krishna and Radha, this divine love between lovers. Um, it's really interesting and it relates to Valentine's Day. Eros is a Greek word for the God of love. And in the Roman tradition, in the Roman religion, Eros was Cupid. So really interesting. And I'll have to post a picture um, tomorrow, but there's a wonderful yoga posture I practice every Valentine's Day. And it's called Kama Devasana. Because in Hinduism, the same God is called Kama Deva. So look for tomorrow. I'll be posting a really cool picture of, of this uh, very advanced posture. Kama Devasana. So yeah, Eros, Cupid, Kamadeva, um, so interesting. But so these are the three, I would say, lower levels of love. Another term I've used, uh, I've heard describing Eros is the way that we love God. And so the other love, the one that I discussed is called Agape. And Agape is unconditional love. It could be described as the way God loves us. So those first three levels, we have we had storge, phileo, eros. They're all dependent on something. They're all conditioned on something. If this person wasn't your family in storge love, if this wasn't your mother, if this wasn't your child, you wouldn't love them if it was just some random person. So that's the condition is that they're your family. In phileo, if you hadn't built this camaraderie, if there wasn't this brotherly love, or if there wasn't this friendship, you wouldn't love them. So that's the condition. In Eros, if this wasn't your lover, if this wasn't your mate, or even God, if this wasn't God, you wouldn't have that love. But the way God loves us, agape, unconditional love, is really beautiful because God loves us no matter what we do, no matter what mistakes we make, no matter what problems we have. No matter how right our actions or how wrong our actions, God is beyond right and wrong. So God's love for us is unconditional love. And so the next question that pops up, are we even capable of unconditional love? And I'm reminded of a conversation in the Bible between Jesus and Peter. And Jesus asked Peter three times. He says, Peter, do you love me? And Peter says, yes, Lord, of course I love you. In English, we can't see how amazing this is because we're reading it in English, but the New Testament was written actually in Greek. Most people think Hebrew or Aramaic. The majority of the New Testament of the Bible was written in Greek. So the first time 
Jesus asked Peter, he said, do you love me? He says, do you love me in agape love? Do you love me unconditionally? And Peter replies, yes, Lord, phileo. I love you like a brother. And Jesus said, no, 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 no. Peter, do you love me, agape? Do you love me unconditionally? And the second time, Peter replies, no. He says, Lord, you know I love you. I love you, phileo love. I love you like you're my brother. And then Jesus is like really trying to teach Peter the message, this truth of the lesson. He says, oh, but so you love me. Do you love me, phileo love? And the third time when, when Christ used phileo, the different word, Peter got it. And he says, oh, you know everything, my Lord. I love you in agape love. And so the simple fact that Christ was asking Peter if he loved him in phileo love, it implies that we have this capability. We have this capability to love unconditionally, to love everyone beyond right, beyond wrong, good or bad, whether they're our friend or not our friend, whether they're just a passerby or whether they're our lover or our mother or our child or our brother or our sister. But we should have love for everyone on the planet. And I even posted a really interesting comment the other day all this insanity related to this presidential election, that if you don't accept President Trump with the same love that you accepted Obama, then you are failing this spiritual test. Because this realm, this world we live in, is an illusionary, an illusion, something just de designed for us to learn, for us to develop, an apprehension or a knowledge of the next lesson we need to learn in our physical, emotional, and spiritual evolution. So this whole presidential thing, this whole political thing, this whole paradigm that we're moving through is really designed to teach us to love unconditionally. Rumi had an amazing poem. He said, there's a place beyond right and wrong, and I will meet you there. And he's describing of a place of unconditional love. And Christ taught that we have this capability within us. So I encourage everyone this Valentine's Day, not just to send unconditional love to your lover. Not just to your mother or your father or your children or your, fr your friends or your brothers or your comrades. Also to use this opportunity to send love to yourself unconditionally. Regardless of all the mistakes we've made, all the good things, all the bad things we've done in our lives, to love ourselves unconditionally. And well, remember to send that energy upwards and love God unconditionally. Give that love. Allow yourself to receive that love. Become a drop of love like a drop of water merging into the ocean of love. So thank you, I hope you enjoy. Spend some time thinking about these different levels of love and realizing your ultimate capability of losing yourself in the ocean of love. Because that's what this is really all about. Not just your partner, but getting lost in love. They asked a guru in India, how did Christ meditate? Neem Karoli Baba. The students asked him and everybody sat up with great attention, listening. What is this really? What's the teaching here? What's this really all about? And he closed his eyes and tears started streaming down from his face. And they all sat eagerly awaiting his answer to the question. And he said, he lost himself in love. The Bible says God is love, and it's truly the energy that powers the universe. So spend some time losing our own identity, our own ego identification. And this is the path, this is the method to losing the small self, losing the ego, and finding your higher self, finding your authentic self 
in the reality of love. Thank you very much. I hope you have a wonderful Valentine's Day. And I hope you all the success in finding your true authentic self of love and merging with the divine. Thank you. Namaste. I hope to see you soon.